Hello everybody, welcome to the round of 32 match. Oops, starting with a riot. Between Toast Guy and his Norse and Mr. Light and his Nurgle. In the booth with me is Squirrel Dude. Hello. Hey y'all. <laughs> and yes, that is true, Penemu. So yeah, here we go. We've got two teams. Uh, the Nurgle are the ones with the wizard, which is kind of insane, isn't it? But they've only got two rerolls. They've got a full claw pommer with tackle there. They've got a strength up Pestigore with tackle. They've got a claw mighty warrior, two claw mighty warriors with bluff, but then they've only got two warriors. Oh yeah, his team's actually pretty trash, isn't he? He's got 13 The team's actually kind of shit for this matchup, isn't it? Because they have yeah. no guard, which, which is what you really want in this matchup, because you just want to bully the Norse, and you can't really bully this Norse team just because you don't have the skills to do it. And Norse aren't that weak. They have enough strength for to kind of mess about. Especially when And the Dauntless. Yeah, especially when they're stunning people instantly as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got max strength. Some people don't like Ulf, some people don't like Yetis, but he's got all three. So yeah, this is a... They're actually only down, like, uh, two, two strength, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is... Well, this is they have the strength for Pesty, but they also have the Dauntless Runners, right? So they have the two players who can kind of break stuff. If they don't have the guard, it's very easy for the Norse to generate a 2DB with basically players anywhere. The Dauntless Runners, so... Now, easy in the sense that it's risky, but like, I don't know. Oop. Well, now they're up in strength. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, I mean, the joke is, oh no, all that claw not going to use. So you just get it for free with every player. But, you know, it is true that they are paying a bunch of team value for skills they aren't getting any use of for this match. Yeah. And uh, LOD, not that I'd be biased with a favourite, but how badly do I want the Norse beaten? To within an inch of their fucking lives, LOD. <laughs> and, the, and they're on offence first, exactly. Exactly, they are on offence first. Banger intuition. <laughs> uh, win the toss received to start, that's it, isn't it? That's the lyrics of... It's incredible, the Norse have gotten two stuns. And partly because the old friends are so small, but it still feels like they're down players. I don't understand how Norse always feel like they're down <laughs> players. Oh man, the Norse and Yeah, they're a, I, I really don't like them. The Ols and Ghouls are probably the two most standout um, players that are just far too small in the on the model size. Yeah, yeah, they look terrible. I guess that's it. it. You know, they look like they've got two goblins when they've actually got two, two like, curse warriors, doesn't it? And that, that doesn't help mm -hmm. them. Yeah. But it's hard, I mean, yeah, it's hard for them to 2D people, right? Because uh, he's, has, he's got one guard and it's really stupid and it's just gone really stupid. So there's one guard on the entire team. To be fair, there's only two guard on the Norse team, but the Norse have got a dirty player. They've got 13 players. So, I mean, both sides have got 13 players, but still. I feel like this is going to be a Norsening. Uh, well, I guess Toast, you know, Mr. Light's got the wizard, hasn't he? So, you know. I know the blitz was successful. I don't. So, I don't love not blitzing with the Yeti every single turn. I mean, it has Juggernaut as particular, but. And just going for random. Rando lineman blocks, but that's me nitpicking. I guess the, the Yeti is pretty important for just giving you a tool, but. It's weird. It's, I don't know, it's weird every time I see a team that takes a Yeti or a Rad Ogre that doesn't have better killers on the team, not just using it every single turn. Yeah, that was pretty weird that he didn't use it. I didn't get that. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Light needed another 87 games on his team, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, had yeah, 13 I mean, that's, the... dead. that's a good point. One of these is dead, there's only 12. There's only, they're capped at 12 for the rest of the match. Yeah, the Nurgle already. Yeah, they don't gain players the way Undead do, so they yes. gain them, but not for later. Yeah, very good point. But yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a good point. Uh, good point there by Penemu that the fireball can be particularly devastating against Norse. So Norse really like normally I like playing around the bolt, and if somebody fireballs you, then they've got to get a really good fireball for it to be good. Whereas against Norse, I, I definitely wouldn't want to risk, you know, somebody somebody pounding a fireball in because it's just too likely to remove a bunch of players and absolutely annihilate you. And also, Nurgle is more looking to use the fireball anyway, or is there as much to gain a positional and just completely crush an offense as it is to try and steal the ball? Like exactly, they haven't, yeah. they have one agility four player, but if they can just get a bunch of knockdowns, it's over. 
Now that's more true if they had more guard, and this blitz is really stupid. Because <laughs> I guess you have to pile on. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. So now we're gonna smash the lineman, blitz the yeti, and then we're gonna fa we need to foul this uh, palmer. Yeah. Like, every day of the week you have to foul this player. Yep, and you've got a rookie there, it, and he can't really tag because he's got mighty blow strength for there. So he's just gonna just gonna foul this pestigor and be happy with himself that he's he's done that, I guess. Oof, probably would have had to reroll that pickup on the uh, on the sideline. It might have been worth it just to use the sure hands because I don't know if you're gaining much by moving up this turn anyway. Might have, I don't know. I guess we're okay. We're playing around the lightning bolt, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He is With the dedicated the... son of Blood Bowl Is poop. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. There's the foul for nothing. Not sure about that foul. <laughs> he needed the uh, guard assist in Blood Bowl 2020 rules to get through. I guess. Oh yeah. So they're all inspectors, except Blood Bowl, son Ooh. of Blood Bowl is poop. <laughs> yeah, and there's also that's also put up a chain push on to to move the Yeti out of that group of guys. It's very easy to get assists onto him now, isn't it? Too. Yes. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. This is a this is a beautiful hit chaining him there, and then you two D him with Claw Mighty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's pretty that's a pretty bad spot. Could it's maybe even make that the fouling the player you foul to. Yeti gets the pow. This this is this is bad letting this happen for sure. Oh, he didn't do it. Oh, I guess he's got guard, so I still hate that. I just hate that he didn't get an extra hit. <laughs> like to yeah. me, that's just an obvious. Yeah, he could have gotten like a blitz on the Ulferner or something too, or on the other or on the other uh, berserker. Yeah. Like. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, I don't know how he's getting. How? Because that's only a 1D, isn't it? Because he's got guard. And then you can't... Oh, so you put all them in your 2D him, and then you claw palm the Yeti. Right in front of the sure. dirty player. Okay. I guess that's okay. I like that move if you think you're a big favourite. You know, because the claw mighty Yeti is the biggest way of them getting lucky and killing your team. But I think it's totally fine to go after claw mighty Yeti as opposed to the... Just because it's the most variance piece, if nothing else, it gets rid of like a whole lot of randomness theoretically from the game. Yeah. But I for sure like just getting the claw mighty hit and then claw from someone else, or him if you don't. Because like I don't like panning on in front of a dirty player. <laughs> there is a lot that can go wrong here, but hey. Yet he is the way to randomize the equity. Yep. As Rick famously said, he's not fouling the jump up guy. I guess he is controlled with strength four and guard on him. Yeah, I like this. I love that three plus dodge to get the old furner to like. The issue, of course, is that he's going to get surfed. So, but I do like doing these dodges with the Pestigore to like put pressure on okay. the ball. Yeah. Mind you, the ball has blocked. They could just not care, but at least it makes the Norse not just get to commit to blocks. And again, Norse have had two players removed, and it feels like they're completely out strength. Yeah, they've got nothing. <laughs> Even with left. no guard. Yeah. They've just got nothing. This guy's. I mean, this guy can blitz him, I guess, and get. Oh, he can blitz him and get them both round, maybe. But this uh, is an example of the problem with Norse runners can present. It's a similar issue to. Um, throwers, though Norse runners are good, and that there's so much SPP being just completely wasted on these players. Yes. That could be guard, which Norse have the issue of getting guard, because old runners die all the time. They're... <laughs> are they the worst? They're they might be the worst strength for players in the game. Because they they're so... Be, yeah. they're, they're, like, what, 110k, and they die at 16 SPP all the time <laughs> if they get there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're pre but it's also by virtue of which team they're on, right? If they were on, yeah. like if they were on dwarf teams, they'd get instead of troll slayers, they get hit a lot less. So it'd be mm -hmm. they, they do they do a lot better on like a Norse team than a Norse than, than a Norse team. I had yep. Norse once it died. <laughs> they all 
I mean, they're armor value 8 players with Frenzy that have no guard support that just get themselves into horrific situations all the time. Yeah, And yeah. just get hit all the time. And they've kind of got to expose themselves and take guard themselves because the, the team is so guard starved. So, so they've got to be roadblocks and frenzy guys. Like it's just it's just kind of horrible, right? Whereas if, at least if they're on a dwarf team or, or like whatever, they could they could then just go fully mighty blow piling on as the first two skills and stuff, and just like yeah. go crazy killer route and like block tackle, break tackle, and just be like kind of weird bulls. But yeah. They don't get to do that on Nice. They've just got to try and carry the team all together. They have to be strength four killers on a team that has two frenzy jump up killers, but <laughs> and also has a claw mighty blow killer and a yeti eventually. Like it doesn't make, they don't make any sense. Yeah. Does he jump up and uphill the beast? That's the question. Sure. <laughs> I mean, if you want to I mean, know somebody, times... that's how you do it, I guess. Um, if he doesn't, he probably gets his... Also, I mean, hey, a rule on a rotter, that's that's cool, I guess. It's a, it's a Norse game, you're losing players left and right, it's what happens. <laughs> but, I mean, if he doesn't stand up... If he stands up, he gets claw pump, probably. Well, actually, he just gets, like, might little bit. If he doesn't stand up, the Norse should stand on his neck. So, or the Nurgle should go and... Just say, the ball is cool, but we're going to go kill this killer, because it's good, and the rest of the team is not, so... Yeah, he's, I mean, he should worry a little bit about the ball here. Maybe it's, uh, this mighty blow guy could blitz yeah. the runner there, mm -hmm. I like that. And he can three dice him as well, if he uh, does a GFI first. You need to do two GFIs, I don't... I guess the... Yeah, yeah I guess you only need to do one, but yeah. For... Big fan of lying down. I mean, me too, in general, Timmy. <laughs> I think as the as a tactic for the team in this game, it's not so good. But just in general life, yes, <laughs> I'm on board with that. I guess this way you could double GFI and then foul with the rotter potentially. Not that I think you should foul after you, losing your bench already, yeah. like capped at eleven. I don't really like fouling anymore. No. Not the best. So maybe just think, GFI and get get the warrior in on the off there. I guess if you don't lose that rod of the previous turn, you do go for the foul on the Palmer. I still like conceptually going for it anyway, though. But also, yeah, I love well, the beast being exactly what it. Oh, like beast is. Beast might be the most frustrating big guy because it can be so good, but. You just had to not use it. But in that case, the activation was so good because a push is just all the Norse are stuck on strength on strength by tentacles to stand from. Yeah. And now, of course, he really wants to be able to get this guy up. But to do it, he's probably got to put... Well, no, he can run away now. Oh, he's, 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 he's overcommitted to the right-hand side, I think, Mr. Light. I think you can put two guys up there and blitz with him. Uh, you know, I know you could jump up, but I think you want to blitz to get him away from the beast. <laughs> He's got the guard lineman down too, so he could probably do something like guard lineman also. Yeah, maybe to, put him in there for these hits. Yeah, to unlock some stuff up there. Yep. So he's got options. Yes, I think I think he shouldn't have activated the beast, to be honest. Because he was doing a lot of work, taking away guard, and both uh, both circus. I, I like just not activating it. What I mean. I get activating it, but the upside might have been worth it, but I, it, the downside was really bad. Yeah, like that's the thing when, when you're when you're already like kind of covered there. I don't know, like just holding three people because he's got to jump up, so he's very mobile still. It's not as if like you know you, mm -hmm. you're tagging yeah. three, you're tagging uh, you're tagging two more people who can react, and then if you power, you're getting three people that can react because at the moment he's already tagging three people that can react because uh, that's true. Because that guy is jump up and fast from the ground. So yeah, that that guards there is perfect. Because now I think I think you blitz here. I think you blitz, and then to guarantee the stand up and run away. Yeah. 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 Nope. We're not blitzing there. Okay. 
we're gonna risk trial appearance. Yep. <laughs> Run. Wow. This is a very Norse game. Just constant armor breaks on both sides. Yep. Also, remember the, Nur the Nurgle of a wizard, so all this, like, really loose ball protection, standing parallel to a tackle, is not not the best. No. And he's also got this guy on the ground with a, with a bolt. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Are we bringing Dirty Player back to cover? Yes. Yeah, we kind of had to. So Place are just doing the... Okay. Now he's easily clear to get the beast on the ball. I quite like that. Yeah, I think that's probably worth it. Doing the beast splits. Is there what else can he get done? I mean, he's got a two. D he oh wow, he kept the two. He still has the two D on the uh, dodger with tackle and mighty blow. That's a great hit for yeah. free. And you can possibly free up a rotter to go and provide an assist to remove the uh, guard guy. Yeah, but there we go. It's the pal. It's a lovely pal. You probably got to tag out the berserker with uh, with this guy, I guess. Tag him out. So you can uh, I him. actually would like to move the mighty blow tackle first and put him in the pocket between the berserker and the guard guy, so that you're both. Uh, I guess you don't need to. I think you need to keep the beast not stupid, but so you don't need to do that because there's already a guy there. He's just gonna blitz him. That's that's how he. That's how he gets rid of the defensive assist. Just pom him. It's berserker, my and There we go, cheeky cats. Hello, kills it. Yeah, a bit of Among Us, and then it was just randomly up. So I thought. Well so we are well now we don't obviously go to the ball, but three D after that failure. Three D into a foul? No no you can't foul anymore. Well I don't like this because if you don't get the power you don't get three D. Oh. oh no he piled on anyway. No, he piled on. Of course oh. he piled on, so it wasn't three D anyway. Can you, do you take the 2D on the garter over the uh, Palmer effort here? Or you do nothing? Do nothing, just go stupid again. <laughs> but would you rather hit the garter in the situation, or hit the Palmer who's kind of controlled? Um, I think I would hit the garter. Because he unlocks more for them, right? Just, I think just because I'd, I'd get the beast central, and mm. then... Uh, and then able to go either way. Yeah. Whereas if you if you if you follow there, you're like over to one side, aren't you? I mean, you could hit and not follow, but then if you hit and not follow, you can you can run away. And I guess I guess this is the better player to tag with your tentacles. But I think I would just want him central. I also kind of feel like the guard. The Palmer is really valuable, but the guards like real having the Norse getting all their guard off the field is really important for the team that's stronger, theoretically anyway. Yeah, it'd be nice for sure. Oh, here we go, mm. turtle. T -A -T -A. Tackles all out of position. <laughs> the other one's on the ground. But this feels... bad. Yeah, especially with a wizard in play. But he's running out of turns, isn't he? Actually, that like it's turn six because yeah. there was that riot. Always throws mm -hmm. me off the riot. Like I'm so used to just playing and like not looking at the turn counter, you know, just like just by knowing by playing that it's like yeah. things like it's riot. Turn four, turn really five, it's somewhere around there. He doesn't need to advance for more turn, but actually he does kind of need. He probably didn't need to advance this far, but he has been shuffling around for quite a bit. Yeah, yeah that that is that I... is funny. How how big a how big a deal that is. I kind of hate bringing that guy in just to be an assist. I guess he's marking your guy. Okay, we're using this guy to blitz and then free up our Palmer. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Stops the easy beast activation as well. And that's your fully screen. Yeah, that was, that was nice. 
He might get force of score next turn, but I think you're okay. Yeah, Just that's scoring fine. against a wizard, against Nurgle. Yes. With you have, you have KOs and they have Cavs. I yeah. think you're pretty okay giving them a two turn. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'd, I'd score this all day uh, next turn. Oh, except he's not in range. You'd have to GFI. So... I mean, with two turns and two rerolls, I think I might be willing to do the GFI as opposed to have to face a wizard and face a strength war blitz. I also don't... I don't understand the positioning. Yeah. I don't really understand the positioning of that berserker. I feel like one no. square down is just better. Well, I think, like, two squares down is better. <laughs> and then... Like, because he just left a three plus on, basically, to go get... No, there was not even a dodge on. He... That was just GFIs with the two, three, four, six, seven. Okay, it was he couldn't have hit with the strength four. He was he could only base. Uh, now you've got to hit this guy right and get your beast on the ball. Yeah. And maybe do a double GFI blitz or something, something stupid just to get players over there. Okay. Oh god. Oh god no. <laughs> no, I do not. I do not like not getting the beast on the ball. I can't so we're play. going. Okay, so I guess we're gonna do a, G a GFI with the warrior to base the berserker before the end of the turn. Oh my god, he piled up. <laughs> Alright. Don't Dude, break our. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was... if he had broken armor, I would have understood it. Like, but that was well half the time. I just <laughs> give up a player when he for free. Yeah, after using your wizard and you've only got three players that can possibly get around the ball. That's pretty mad. That is a bit of a mad pile on. I'm of the school of you should only not pile on when it cost you the game, and I think that was one of the cases where it could have cost you the game. <laughs> For sure. So I think you do the two GFIs with him before you do the dodge. Yes. You can, yeah, but, but you could have also GFI'd with him, right? You could have had a guy on the ball already. With tackle. Uh, also, I'll point out uh, again since the beginning of the game, uh, Norse have the skill Dauntless, so strength four is not actually a huge deal. We're just gonna pick up the ball. All right, sure. But and he's yeah. got a GFI. <laughs> so I was gonna say similar to with Eastman, if you just base him with strength four, it's not really a huge. Oh, he's passing. Oh, what? Why are we punting? <laughs> what? what? Just GFI. Just GFI so you can't be served and then move this guy over. This guy's still on the wrong side. If you're going to do that, move this guy first. Like, that's terrible, isn't it? If your plan is to yeah. punt, then for fuck's sake, move this guy first. So, like, you have a nice screen for players on the bottom coming up to get out the ball, and, like, it's hard, but now it's just. Yeah. Wow, wow. That was real bad from Mr. Light. Really bad from Mr. Light. I am shocked. And oh my god, I can't believe you spent the wizard on that turn. Um. <laughs> yeah, irre irrelevant blip, irrelevant block first way. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. I'll just punch things. <laughs> I'll just hit a rotter so I have a chance to be up players going into the second half because the score still isn't very good. But man, that strength four player is now irrelevant because it does not affect next turn at all. Yep. I. I know why we didn't do the dodge blitz, because if it fails, everything's bad, but man, I would have kind of liked to do the dodge blitz with the Palmer to give myself another square movement. I don't know if that square movement's even relevant here. No, 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 I think this was definitely the play. Yeah. Because the square movement's not relevant. Yeah, it's insane. yeah, and ta tying him up is not... The bad thing is, if he blocks you, so you've got to try and tag with the Ulf, yeah, which he does. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll try and tag with the Ulf, and then do the dodge with him. I think tagging the Palmer is actually maybe correct because that way they're even with pushes, the strength four. Mm -hmm. I guess the GFI is worth it actually, because you're still. He could have just he could have just punched him right. He could still can just punch him right on one. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably worth punching him on one day. The like... the concern is if he like does a snakes it or does a one because there's like a way to get I think there's an easy way to get a 2D on the ball but that yes. pretty much kills that 
Yeah, yeah, this was good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> He's, uh... So, shifting. the Nurgle have blown up their wizard. They have one reroll. Their strength four cannot even threaten to, like, do anything next turn. It doesn't matter, because the Norse are just going to walk the ball in. I mean, he didn't even get Norse. He just fucking threw. He just, like, literally threw the match. He whizzed. Didn't, didn't move the tackle back. Didn't get the beast on the ball. And just tried to punt on a five plus. Like, mad. Madness. Like, madness there, turn. I think this is, like... Can't, and you can't punt against a team that's like, oh, they're all agility three. It's so hard to do anything. It's, it's not. Your warriors aren't in position to put their stink anywhere. Like, it doesn't... A punt doesn't do anything. They're just going to roll a three and pick up and then try and do something there. The turn after that, anyway. Like, it doesn't... But, I mean, this was the most unforgivable thing. Like, if your plan is the punt, then you have to move this guy first. I mean, unless yeah. maybe he's... But he, cause, cause he wasn't going to GFIs. Like, so just move him. And imagine if this guy had been back here, you've got him. Also, the pylon was horrendous. So, like, just so many things have gone bad. And it's surprising, because so, Mr. Light is a good the, player, isn't he? The pylon is only defensible if he had already broken armor on the first roll, which is a bad heuristic and, like, not a useful one in most cases. But in that case, it was just, boy, I sure hope I make a 50-50 roll to not free up a player, and he got a removal board, but, like, yeah. it was still bad, because he still needed that player more than he needed the removal. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Just really terrible. But he, could, he might be able to stop it with a 3 plus 2 plus and a 2D on the board. Gets them double pass. <laughs> Agility 4 players are pretty good when they can be strength 4 on a blitz. Yes. Like, to be fair, I think if we'd seen, like, an elf on the ground like that, we're like, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's got, like, a, a strength four elf on the ground, we'd be like, yeah, that's a pretty bad, pretty unsafe ball, so. Yeah. Fair enough. I guess... This is, looking, this is looking very tricky now, isn't it, those two guys? Now, he can't dodge backwards and score, which is important. If he could dodge backwards and score, this is actually pretty simple. But he cannot yes. dodge backwards and score. One, two, um, three, four, five, six. One short. So, yeah. Well, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. So, yeah, he can't go one back. So, he's got to do something. Like, one dice blitz this guy. And then... Oh well, yeah, it doesn't matter which way he does it. One dice blitz this guy. And then move him into the end zone. And then dodge with the berserker. Oh yeah, okay, we'll just fall plus dodge with him. That gets you 2D. Yeah, okay. It also gives you the chance to serve, right, if you get pushes. So yeah. there's something there for that too. You get a chance to maybe get the best offensive player out of the drive, even if you don't. We're out for the game-ish. Pretty low odds, but... Oh, so he, so he just he just does the pickup score now, doesn't he? So yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Ooh. Sure, fire, but no, I like that play actually. I like that it makes it really easy to figure out who the pickup is. I think on a blitz, but that's actually a, a nice idea, especially because it makes the play really simple. Like you just know exactly what you're gonna do, point A to point B. Wow. It also it's probably. I mean, it's and adding in a, a hand fifth. It, like it's adding in a four plus. I don't know. It I... adds in a it adds in a four plus, but you make the blitz a two D blitz. You're also. It's also like a, it was a four plus dodge with the berserker anyway, it wasn't? Like there was no way for the berserker to get out. Well, you could just one D it. That's you know, like the the one D was an option, wasn't it? Yeah, you do the one D on the. You when... move in your assist, one no. D him, and then you can push him diagonally back, and then. I think I'm I think not, the one day was better. Yeah, I just I'm not sure there was a um well I guess the advantage of making the berserker the score is you get rid of the handoff too. You well you see you still pass. score with a berserker, I just think you do the one day rather than the, the dodge for the two. Mm. I think the berserker mm. pickup was definitely correct. But yeah. it was just it was just weird doing the, like the four plus dodge when he could have just done a one day that like it works in a push, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure the push was good enough. So 
I maybe it wasn't. Maybe you needed I, the power. Maybe. 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 Power. Maybe it's a four plus anyway on the berserker dodge. And if it's a four plus anyway, you just do it with the ult to clear everything and give yourself he, a chance he, to no, serve and get a removal. No, 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 no. You can one d with your you guy on the ground, right? You guy on the ground one d. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But it's okay. whether you need the power or not. That's the question. And I can't uh, remember if you needed the power. He needed a push was enough. Push would have been enough. I'm not Yeah, certain. push would have been enough. And then it's a 3 plus. With a potential for a 3 plus dodge after that, which the Yeti with the Ulf decreased the chance for a 3 plus, but you have the 4 plus dodge on the front end. Yeah. And it's a 2D and not a 1D. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking for some reason the Ulf is like blocking their right on the 1D, but no, you just block with the front end. The 1D might still be better, but I think it's actually surprisingly close with the 4 plus on the front end. So you're yeah. removing any chances of 3 pluses later. Yeah, and the 2D block. Yeah, sad. Mm. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not hopeful of ever getting early nights, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It happened. <laughs> it yeah. happened, so it was the right play. <laughs> exactly. And it's not like Mr. Light can complain. I don't think he played that drive particularly well. No, I think he made, I made, I think he made some big errors. How many Norris came back? Uh, all three. Oh, three good. Two cars. Yeesh. The uh, Nurgle KO is still out. Well, we have two LOS blocks, so we've got a whole whole line of players that get removed. Yep. How close are we to Apoing any badly for to keep numbers on the field? If we're the Norse. Yeah, probably, probably, uh, like, next drive. You know, even if you get both these cars, I think you just wait for next drive. Because you're going to overtime, at least, aren't you? So, yeah, good yeah. Because you can still win the toss in overtime. You can just, you can yeah. just dacker, defensive dacker, Darlo Gambit this half. And Do you then ever, I guess you toss. save an Apo for a KO until potential overtime, too. Yeah, potentially. Apo, good player or... I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind just hiding here for the second half. Just, just totally. Darlo Gambit, this one. <laughs> Blood Bowl's a funny game where the optimal strategy can be not to play it, but that's. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the same case as in like every war game. There are objectives, and the ideal way is to not play objectives until you're guaranteed to take it. Because if you play the objective too soon, you lose. So. Yeah. That's how it goes. It's a good thing we saved the reroll, so we could um <laughs> do a vanity pass. And we didn't. Is there a block up there that was not with Mighty Blow because the Mighty Blow guy was the passer? I guess. I hope not. Yeah, you'd hope not. I mean, I'm sure he's got claw mighty warriors, hasn't he? I'm sure they were. Yeah. The third warrior is back. Yeti on the LOS? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Norse are now guaranteed 10. You have 11 as an Oracle. Do you... Okay, so the Yeti is being protected, which I think is correct. Because he's just a target. Yeah, it's so just, easy. It's so just... easy. Yeah, he's armor seven. It's actually not that easy to hit him because he's only got one guard in on his own team. So like, yeah. it's actually not it's just, that easy to hit him. But if you but protect him a little bit, he's protected. It's not that easy, except for the um, the strength five blitz with the pestle, right? Yeah. So it's he just needs one assist anywhere, and he can go after him. So chaos make it really hard to protect your stronger players because it's just so easy for them to generate blocks on them with very few assists. Except for Chorfs, but Chorfs are weird. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I, I, I've watched Chorfs play, and I've never played Chorfs, and I just don't. I don't get it. They're like Necro for me, where I just, I, I don't like, I don't understand how this team's good. Yeah, they are, they are Necro. a bit like Necro, yeah. I think it's funny. They're, yeah, they're, there's always been the compliment that they're a Bash team that has a lot of strength three, but they don't have the guard access, and they're really weird for like 200 team value at the beginning, and then they're great. <laughs> 
Because their best players start bad, right? That's the thing. Bulls don't start good, and Wolves don't start good, and then they get really, really good, really fast. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, P Diddy. But yeah, this is still tricky for Mr. Light because overtime is his best possible outcome, and he used his wizard, and it had no effect essentially. Like he still ended up one nil down his own drive, like on his defensive drive. Like so, it's not terrible, is it? But it's still pretty bad to have lost 150 cave inducements that mm -hmm. essentially did nothing. In terms Decent of team value, well. obviously he's he's removed 150 linemen and he's lost 80 himself. So, well, 107, 180 in linemen and lost 80 himself. So, there's a little bit of there, but I don't think any of that team value really matters. So, not really. No. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it is it is a man on the pitch, isn't it? That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Moment, being a man up, and if mm -hmm. you make some removals here then defense is going to get very difficult for the Norse. I I, uh, I hate that a runner is on the line of scrimmage and not the dirty player lineman. I kind of hate that he's not just hiding his team away a little bit if you're going to hide. I guess he's playing defense, but like I really, really hate that the runner is just there to get 3 d and then hit again and hit again. No, oh, I don't. I don't. I don't mind that, I would, but uh, I. I don't like that this guy's on the edge. But then it's hard because I mean, you, your dirty player is your only is your only. Uh, you know what's it called? Deterrent against the pylon, right? Mm -hmm. So, I quite like this guy because okay, not not so much now that he's got knocked into this, but um, if he's getting bombed, yeah. it's not that bad. I mean, if he had known, if he had like a perfect defense and he could put him anywhere, you might want to keep him away from the tackler, but he didn't have that, so, you know, it's how it goes. I would have put this guy on the LOS, to be fair, this guy would have been there. But he's got to use the kick skill, Jim. But hasn't he already done it after he gets the perfect defense? <laughs> <laughs> like, am I being stupid? I don't know, I don't no, take no, kick. No, 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 you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> Alright, good. So he could have swapped them. And also it's cyanide, right? So who knows? Maybe he swaps them and then the kick goes out of bounds. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. And also, do you short kick here as Norse? Are you like trying to put pressure on the ball against a team? You want to be able to, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. because that's how you don't get creamed by just, you know. Yeah. But attritional blitzes every turn, right? There, mm -hmm. There's an attrition. You want to make them choose between attritional and positional, and you want them to choose positional. <laughs> yeah. And the best way to do that is make the fight all about the ball. So yeah, you really want to be like high octane, mass, mega pressure right from the off, and just you know really go straight for their balls the problem is if you do that then your men are in contact and you can easily take massive casualties and just lose the game instantly all feels a little feels a little easy to pressure the ball with the one screen that's already based by a guy who can blitz and get out of the way to know, clear I, space I, I like blitzing with the yeti five squares directly back and <laughs> just running away <laughs> this just looks fucked <laughs> if i'm the nose here i'm like oh god what what can i even look out i mean i don't i first of all i'd think why the why am i nose why what have i done wrong in my life that i'm playing nose and chalice and then i think just nope the fuck out of there so this is what i was talking about i hate that you were doing the blitz with the guy from the back and not the guy on the ground who can stand up and blip. And then if you like get power if you can pressure the ball, like put the plage shepherd, like I don't I don't really get the point of that. Or like not blitzing the Yeti to try and get counter attrition. That just felt like a really weird choice that doesn't accomplish anything except get more linemen up to the LOS for the beastman. <laughs> I mean the, the, you like can't that. you can't blitz with a Yeti because the the follows are really bad for you. Yeah. So you, you literally can't, unless it's to run away. <laughs> you can't blitz with a line of it. Yeah, I guess assist with a dirty player and then blitz with this one and then maybe tag the ball so at least he's going to call upon this guy instead of a good player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it looks like it's going to be an old fur. You can kind of... 
Yeah, he can. Ooh, maybe we're actually going for the. Looks like we're going for the Yeti actually, which is oh, probably yep. a better hit. Yeah, this is so. a very strong Yeti player, and this is great having the uh, the tents on the dirty player, so he can't easily foul your claw bomber. Is is the dream? Yeah, he can just kind of man up now with the with the strength, even though he only has three warriors. It's more than enough. Yeah. Point. And no fear of a wizard, crucially, because like if the wizard was still on the cards. Oh no, he was the one with the wizard. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. The far better. Ooh, the better team was the one without the wizard. But he's only got two, he's only got one reroll now, so he's, he's he is. It's not easy, is it? This would make it really tempting to to pressure here. It's hard to pressure now, because you have to get through warriors at this point. But you have a Yeti specifically for that. That's the one thing that Yeti is here for, is to deal with higher strength teams. It's the only value that player has. It is... The Yeti might be the... The worst big guy for elf games. <laughs> yes. In all of... Like, he's so bad. He's, like, really stupid. At least he can just, like... He just moves from their armor value 9 and they have regen. And the Yeti's just... Everyone can target him. And he's put five and terrible. So bad. Oh, well now this is easy, right? You just put the blood stepper on him, yet he blitzes this guy, gives you base, uh, lets you base the ball, and it gives you the uh, oath hit there. Yeah. I think you have to go for a bit of pressure here. Or you try and run away some more, and maybe see if you can draw it. You can bet on making him make more rolls later when he only has one re-roll and you're then going to OT up three re-rolls to zero or something like that. I don't know, I like going, but... I like going in with the Yeti. Oh, he's not going in. He's picking off the edge and vacating the central. I hate that play a lot. <laughs> you could have and even now... blitzed this guy, right? You could have even blitzed this guy, pushed him twice, and then your Ulf can hit this guy, which would have been right, yeah. all right, because you could have had, like, obviously you'd rather claw mighty this guy. Than just my aim, but you, you know, then you'd have more chance of getting two men in the ball. I mean, that's basically the worst case scenario for the Yeti, too, is now the Yeti is out of the game for all times. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and he's trapped his Lino as well. What the hell? Why did he push him that way? He could have just pushed him here. Oh, the dear. only reason you push him there is to bring the runner over and make the central position worse to make a block with the lineman to then isolate him on the lineman like he already was isolated on the lineman. Frenzy trap. There is no such thing as frenzy traps. Just and frenzy traps aren't even that bad. It's just a two and two or one. Just get a stun so the claw can't just get up and kill your <laughs> your ult on the next turn. Frenzy opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah. He's the worst big guy. Open is the worst strength for. Throw is yeah. the worst thrower on any team. Worse or bad. Have a bunch of overpriced bad players. <laughs> they benefit because they have a bunch of underpriced linemen because they took armor. They have armor value seven and a block. It's the only redeeming feature of the team. Yeah. Is horrible linemen and the berserkers are amazing strength three, strength three blizzers. That's the whole thing. It's the whole team. That's it. Yeah. Runners yeah. are actually pretty good. I might they're, see a little bit of space here. Can can you see it, squirrel? <laughs> um, you know. It's what's all might call trap space, um, and the fact like the trap is um, special play cards are in effect, and there is actually a trap door. Um, <laughs> other than that, you know. Wow, that was. Still I don't even have to... Pretty. I guess he hasn't got any guard, has he? So it's still pretty difficult for him. But I still don't like that as much as doing other things. But never mind. <laughs> It's so easy that he can he can probably do everything wrong this turn and still uh, still steam up the pitch away from the Yeti. I think you still need to stand up that warrior for him to get like surfed because if you get surfed, I'm like, all right, I mean, you just want to lose the drive, I guess. That's fine for the Norse to just lose the drive. But... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You've you've got to stand him up. Yeah. It's a two D on the other old Ferner. Oof. And for what it's worth, uh, the old the uh, Yeti is not the worst big guy. He's just worth. Oh boy, boy block is a good skill. Cast. The oh, uh, Yeti, not the worst big guy. He's just the worst against elves. The worst big guy is obviously the Chorf Mino, who has no role on any team. He's just <laughs> terrible. 
No, I actually, I actually like him more than a Chaos Minor, despite the fact that he is strictly worse. Just because he does some, he adds something to the team. He he adds strength yeah. to a to a strength three team, whereas the the Chaos Minor just doesn't like it. It's okay in short leagues. Yeah, it's okay in short leagues because at least you can get an early claw mighty. But like. Realistically, you just don't need him on a chaos team. You've got loads of strength already. You've got a strength four blitz anywhere you want. And you've got four warriors. Whereas, Chaos are pretty low on strength, and like it's it is bad. It's literally definitely worse than a chaos minnow. The, but at uh, least the chaos it gives you something that that the chaos. That's minnow, true. You know, the chaos minotaur and the Kislev bear are examples of players who are way worse in different contexts. Because yeah. the Croc score is just amazing on Lizardman, but he's just kind of okay on Kissel because he's so expensive and the team's already, like, wildly expensive. Yes. And he's not, he's replacing, like, a lineman who can become, like, a good player on that team as opposed to a skink who's just garbage. And mm. the Cast Monitor, like, your instead doesn't really replace the same stuff. Doesn't really provide anything like he does on, um, Pact or Chaos Dwarves in the same way. Is he, go is he going in with the, uh, with the Yeti, I think he might be. Uh, he could take a 2D for a pat. Uh, yeah, he's going in GFI. Get him. Kills oh. him. <laughs> no region. Oh, baby. Very fortuitous scatter, but this is the thing with. Uh, Nurgle is, uh, they're kind of like, kind of like Necro, and that suddenly you're like, oh, all my players can pick up are gone. Yeah. It's just he's... one or two removals. He really, he'd really like to be able to foul this, wouldn't he, right, now, right about now, but he's got to just put dudes near the ball, hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, shtick, yeah. What do you guys think the Raul got? I, I, I actually like it, but then Store is better than me, and he dislikes it, so I guess I shouldn't like it. I do like so, it. Red Ogre has a specific role on the team in the early team value. He provides with the team not to get completely outcast because Mighty Blow is a much better skill than Claw. He has Tails, so he kind of does stuff against Elf teams. And then he dies, and by that point, you just replaced him anyway with better players, so he's not, like, a problem. And the team doesn't need him for high armor the way Norse do because they have gutter runners and they have Claw Mighty Blow. So. Yeah, that's the thing. Eventually, eventually they have Claw Mighty Vaughn, eventually they have Gutters, but when they start off, Gutters are yeah. a bit shit. And and obviously the Claw, the claw Pommers aren't Claw Pommers, so yeah, I like that he <laughs> smooths over that that early phase, which is a bit annoying. As, a, as For me, I always find it very rough. Well, not very rough, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but quite rough, the early, the early Skaven, so I, I quite like having him. But... He is very expensive, and like I said, when he dies, you know, he dies. Like, whatever. He's going to get himself killed, but he's fine. Most big guys are whatever. I don't... Oh, I have no how idea. How stupid has this beast been, by the way? That's another it's really stupid. And eating the Blitz as well. That's Horrendous. the third or fourth now? I think this might be the fourth. Jeez. Oh, he feels the how dodge that was trying to get to him. Mm. That would have, like, that would have got him... At least, like, you know, to got him the 2D on that, then the 2D on that, and then this rot of free to pick up the ball, maybe. But yeah. some horrible dice for an out of rerolls now, Mr. Light. This could be this could be the end for Mr. Light. Oh my god. Oh my. No, that's over. Um. <laughs> Regens, but is it going to matter? Probably not. No. He hasn't even really done much damage to this Norse team in terms of permanence. So if you got like one MMG, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Did the minus move? Oh, oh he might have already, no, he already had the minus already. move. Yeah. Yeah. Missed and next he... on the uh, on the blitzer. Yeah. yeah. He's only ninety blow. It's fine. I really love how the game just doesn't really show you what the current injuries are. It's just and the new and the new game is even still bad at that. I don't know how they're all still so bad at showing what the injuries for the match are. It's just yeah. Incredible. They haven't learned anything in three games for how to present that, but look, it's, they're a small indie company that keeps getting bought by bigger companies that <laughs> had ten, like, for a decade of trying to make this game with multiple people having designed games and 
Games Workshop designing a, a format with the actual pitch and companies that they aren't, and people, and like one dude in his basement and some people who volunteer designing a UI, but, you know, <laughs> it's just too hard, too hard to learn. Yep. Ooh, now that's a big miss, right? Because he, he really wanted him cleared so this guy could go pick up the ball, and he wanted to surf this guy, but now he's got to blitz this guy to clear him, yeah. Yeah, made the right play. He can still, uh, I think you do pile that on. Yeah, you can pile that on. Pile, I don't know, you, you can go there and assist this block. I, I, I don't hear that, or here, and then assist the block and, uh, and like, protect the, the ball. He had the dirty player free to go assist that block. I would have put the armor break on it and the chance to get the best player on the field off the field. I kind of love the pile on too much to... I mean, the go. pylon is good. The pylon is good. Don't get me wrong, but I, 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 I think the fact he's stunned, and the fact that you're getting the ball this turn, it is kind of a critical mm -hmm. turn, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. The beasts are actually really nicely controlled right now too. Yeah, yeah I did not like the visit. Yeah. Oh, fails the ball pick up. And I think you should and move this dirty player before. Like, the point of not piling on is to then move this dirty player before you do the pickup and, like, you know, move him into somewhere good. Maybe not he thought he was good him. there. He already, maybe he thought that he formed the cage point there already. He forms, like, a loose cage point there already. But that's a badly timed because he also had the, he had the uh, block on the Yeti he was clearly saving, or the block on the clock where he was clearly saving up with the Yeti after that action. Yeah. Help. Well, he opens with a 3 plus and fails. So now it's looking plain sailing. Absolutely. Who do you try and score on if you're the Norse? Oh, not that oh, off because he's just double sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why he didn't hit this guy to clear the tackle zone. Why did he hit the? Why did he hit the beast? Does he think <laughs> he's just one and uh, then he wants to hit the beast to like not get mighty blow? Hit? This, this this Zerker gets him to 51. Oh yeah, you got to score on the Zerker for um, God for what do you get on him at that point? I have Dauntless. God. God. Dauntless or guard, yeah. Dauntless if you need him to be a better killer. I guess we're not scoring on it. All right. Yeah, well, like guard's guard at the end at the end of the day, like yeah. you know, you just need as much of it as you can get. It and it's okay. What's the um? Killer, but it's just good. What's the ult? Just block out. Okay, we're gonna pile on the rudder and not the whatever. Twelve. Whatever. <laughs> whatever, Trevor. I mean, it's looking pretty good for him, isn't it? Yeah, just hit the hit the claw Don't bomber. Even think about hitting the claw bomber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. Get, get the ball. Get the ball. Well, it's, it's near tentacles. The tentacles are knocked out. Good now. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Now, now you can hit the claw bomber and foul him. <laughs> <laughs> you foul him. I guess you foul him over the strength four. Yeah, you you've got you got this gonna. Oh yeah, this. If you're playing, if it was the final game of the season, you might go down and foul the rotter and not the claw bomber. Okay, you don't yeah. foul the claw bomber. You foul the strength four. <laughs> <laughs> You could even assist the foul with this guy, because he isn't going to fucking catch you, is he? Yeah. <laughs> but he is moving him down, yeah, I mean, that's, that's that's reasonable. I think, I'm not sure that's quite right, I want to move him maybe just to the rotter camp base, that's the only thing that can happen, I don't really know why moving him from Peace and Riddle matters, but whatever. It, it's irrelevant, it's an irrelevant difference. Yeah, like, I think moving him down to support, then he can tag the warrior or whatever if he comes to try and yeah. interfere with a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it yeah, I think, All, I the think only here, play he has a, here yeah, be better. literally the only thing that Urkel can do is base with the rotter, that's, that's it, the game is over, so, mm -hmm. he can, this is just you say GG and you, like, end the turn, like, yeah. or you, you go for some kills for the, you know, the sanctity of the competition, I guess. <laughs> It's hard though, isn't it? <laughs> You've got two players stood up on the, the start of the turn, <laughs> being absolutely nice. But at the end of the day, it was it was a, it was pretty self sabotage by Mister Light, I think he he had a really horrific one in Indy One. To be fair, 
Yeah. Um, and then his then all, then this just happened to him. Like, and then every three plus failed. Every yeah. single one ended. So I think the final penalty didn't really get to keep playing. Um, the game just kind of ended for him. Yeah. Uh, I think he could feel diced, but the fate was kind of. He was playing uphill once he had that really bad wizard turn. Yeah, I think I think he, yeah, like it was similar to one of the other games. Like he didn't do himself any favors, but like even if he had, he was probably screwed anyway because of the dice. Mhm. Mm I mean, Mr. Light is American, isn't he? I believe. I believe Mr. Light's American, so like it, he shouldn't be like super tired or anything. Like I think. Yeah. I think Tosca and who are both Americans. Sometimes you just Canadian. don't play well. It happens. It's not everyone has a, everyone has bad games. It happens. Canadian. Yeah. North America. That's what I mean. They're both the same. Man. It's, um, <laughs> Blood Bowl is also a game where it's hard for us to see what they're trying to do because if they just fail, it's like, well, that was a bad play. We didn't because you don't ever see the result, and so we can't see if they had some yes. idea that we just couldn't have imagined, right? We just see the the. Two plus that failed that cancelled all of it, though punting was definitely not the right choice, but it didn't make any sense. Yeah, that that whole turn was pretty terrible. Yeah. And yes, a large side you're gonna get Norse, but you know. Yeah, they're both they're both NA. Yeah, they're both NA, so I mean but yeah, people can just have bad games, but I thought Mr. Light was better than this. But then maybe I'm being too critical and maybe he was, you know, you know, right. just have a bad game or whatever. So Mr. Light, I want you. You need a blitz, that strength for Pestigor to try and kill something, and then you need to foul the Palmer for the sanctity of the competition. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Don't just stand up. Come on. <laughs> oh, wow, he's helping Come on, him. Come on. Collusion. Collusion. Oh. What kind of Nurgle play is this? Disgusting. Actual collusion. A large thud's fuming. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fuming. Oh, I just go as I Well, there you go. Well, the good news is he got more, you know, runner SVP, so. Hmm. Cool. Get good. He hits. <laughs> the player that already has, like, 15 too much SVP gets three more. Alright. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I don't know what Norse runners take every blast up to your hands. They don't roll doubles. I guess it's, I, they don't tackle obviously. Tackle is fine, but like Ooh. Yeah, the next one is the leader. leader. Like four rerolls would be fine. Do they have passing access? Yeah. Runners? No, they've got agility, runners? haven't they? They've got agility, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, no, nothing. Nothing left. Fend. <laughs> uh Fend. Fend, diving, tackle. Yeah. Tackle is probably the best choice because they have Dauntless too, right? They already have like the one niche skill. Yeah. Uh, they don't need kick off return. Kick. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> yeah, I do like the ward answer kick. If like, the player is done, you just give them a kick and they're going to be on the field every turn. Uh, wrestle if you want to be a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> that is actually fend. one of the things. Probably Fen, honestly. Look, Wrestle is not as good as Block, but Norse probably does suffer a little bit from not having any player that can easily take Wrestle to give them any kind of way to sack the ball reliably. Yeah. Having to, like, be super cool. So it actually probably is a weirdness of the team. If they have that problem. Yeah, he's not even... Come on, be Nurgle. Kill the other team. Yeah, come on. Come on. Get rid of the kick at least. We don't oh, have... collusion. Oh, my God. Collusion. Catch it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fair enough not hitting him, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah. if you hit him, okay, it's like makes it hard. It makes it easier for his next opponent, but it also makes it harder for the other like 15 people aren't in the next round so like like mm -hmm. so it's it just it it's six and two threes i don't think that you that you know that you should feel like you have to try and kill people or that you shouldn't have to try and kill people because at the end of the day it's it's like almost literally six and two threes right you're benefiting so yeah. harming others and who cares so i don't think do you um, care about that. you take catch on north runners 
to the help them on turns. Oh my <laughs> god. Off <laughs> yeah, turn them into Brett Blitzers. Yuck. <laughs> what? Yuck. Brett Blitzers with one less armor. <laughs> Yuck. And no passing skills. God. At least they aren't Brett Blitzers who are general passing, which I will never get over how horrible that team oh, used god, to be. Yeah. It was absolutely so horrific. It was absolutely horrific. So I had to say, he was like, "Yeah, the, the real threat is you take two Brett Blitzers and never any more because they're all terrible and you don't want them to develop." Yeah. You get one for a leader and one you just cycle until he rolls double for mighty blow. <laughs> the rest of the team's garbage. Yep. <laughs> well, there you go. That was it. Um, congratulations, Toast Guy. Commiserations, Mister Light. Thank you very much, Squirrel Dude, for coming on and, and doing this in the middle of the night. Gl absolutely glorious. It's fine. <laughs> I'll uh, just keep talking for a little bit, give the PC outro. And... So <laughs> is there anything I don't know we really want to talk about with the Norse team? You know, I think he really actually played pretty well. And besides from maybe making it a bit too easy on the wizard turn, which is something you learned about, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, Mr. Light... Didn't have the best turn on that, so it was fine. And yeah, really, that's I the think... kind of thing you do with claw You really aren't so... doing the PC thing, aren't you? <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, it was, you know, Mr. Light. I think it was a bad game for Mr. Light. And there you go. Right, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>